show your support. Follow me on Twitter. Hello, I am that British guy, and welcome to my review of the free PlayStation Plus game Yakuza Kiwami. Now, apologies that this video is a little later up than it should be. Um, you can probably still hear in my voice that <clears throat> I haven't been particularly well this week, and so it kind of delayed me playing through enough of this game in order to review it, but I have now, and yeah, because of that as well, this video will be kind of quite short and sweet. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to try and not ramble on as much as I normally do. So, let's begin. Now, this game is a remake of the original Yakuza game, something that I wasn't particularly aware of. Uh, it's not a franchise I've had much contact with, if I'm being honest, um, but it was remade a few years ago for the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4, as well as obviously on Xbox as well. And there is a sequel um, that has been released as well, which is again a remake of the second of the kind of original series. So in this game, at the very beginnings, it is very story driven, um, and there's a lot of kind of toing and froing in terms of the timeline. You kind of witness something, then go back a day, and then sort of forward a little bit of time, and back a few months, and it kind of chops and changes around a bit. So. You've kind of got to really concentrate and stick with it at the beginning, especially as, um, because obviously this game focuses around the Yakuza families, um, and obviously the Japanese element, it was released kind of for a Japanese audience and has English subtitles, but all the voice acting is still entirely in Japanese, so you've really got to concentrate. Uh, there's a lot of reading to be doing, unfortunately. Um, because if you miss a few bits and pieces, um, it doesn't kind of lodge itself somewhere in your subconscious as if you've kind of heard it. So you kind of really got to be in the right mindset for that. And I think that's what put me off the games um, when I played a few of them a few years back. I just never really got into it. But I managed to with this one. It was, it was a bit of a slog at the beginning, I'll be honest, um, up until a point where something happens and a lot of time elapses. Um, I'm not going to go into details because I don't really want to ruin elements of the story, but once that happened, I'd kind of engaged myself enough into um, the storyline and wanted to kind of really focus in on it and really sort of see what happens with the characters. So I think once you get over that hurdle, that's not a problem. And at that beginning chunk of the game, you are kind of almost this super boss type character. Um, the gameplay is kind of beat em up style. You'll kind of encounter um, various enemies, either in the streets or in buildings or whatever, at certain times, and that will trigger um, kind of a fight scene. And it's very much along the lines of kind of a Tekken or... Um, Something like just a regular beat em up where it's kind of you against either one opponent or a couple of weaker opponents. And once you kind of clear them out, then you can just proceed on with your day. So, yeah, it's kind of very Japanese in that element. It's kind of Final Fantasy levels of character and story with Tekken levels of um, gameplay in that sense. Once the time lapse happens, you are kind of almost reset back to nothing. Uh, because of this you haven't been fighting for a very very long time and you're kind of thrown into that again and you kind of have to build yourself up so there's an element of kind of gaining enough experience from encounters uh, doing a few side missions and things for certain people that are triggered randomly that you can either do or leave for later or completely ignore if you wish to and as you develop and grow you're able to kind of learn new skills um, and make your character stronger and able to kind of fight harder bosses effectively. Now when you come back after a prolonged amount of time um, everything has changed so your character is kind of not aware of those significant changes and obviously you as a player wouldn't know them anyway and it's a good way of kind of not alienating you as a player from what's going on around you. You're kind of learning along with the character that you're playing so it makes sense from a kind of a storyline perspective and as you play through and learn about what's happened to certain characters that you were once close to 
um, it kind of almost leads you down this rabbit hole of conspiracies and murders and corruption within these various Yakuza families that are all kind of vying for dominance effectively. Each family is trying to kind of set themselves above the other families to try and kind of control this region and you kind of having to chip away at all these fake allegiances um, and dodgy dealings effectively and see really what happened um, when everything went down and you were kind of turfed out effectively. I won't say too much more because um, as I said I don't want to ruin it but it certainly uh, whets the appetite put it that way. And in terms of the sort of fighting gameplay it's uh, you're kind of left with four different fighting styles that you can select with the d-pad there's sort of a, a speedy version there's a sort of slow lumbering hulk version um, and there's two more balanced ones, one's sort of just a generic brawler and one is what's called dragon so it's kind of more martial arts based but the two of them are kind of more average if you like in terms of speed and strength and they all have their different uh, kind of strengths and weaknesses depending on who you're fighting and you kind of have to get used to switching between them depending on who you're facing really and having to develop each of those uh, categories as evenly as you physically can because some of the abilities that you learn are only available for certain kind of um, skill sets um, whereas others are more generic and can be taught once across all of them so you've kind of got to keep that as balanced as you can um, it can become a little bit button mashy but you have to be because in some of the fights you are very very surrounded by like a good dozen or at least sort of half a dozen to a dozen um, enemies so you have to be aware of what's around you and it can be very easy for you to kind of go button mashy on one character or two characters in a corner and easily get completely blindsided so it's not as simple as that it kind of starts off as simple as that but um, there is kind of a steep learning curve when you come back into the city and you're a lot weaker and um, you kind of have to almost relearn how to um, engage in these fights in a proper manner um, and thankfully then it kind of veers away from just being a button masher um, you have to be clever with your evading and your blocking and as I said using um, the different skill sets depending on who you're facing so we move on to buy try or fly as you can see here the game is currently priced on the PlayStation Store at $15.99 now it's got huge amount of story I don't even think I've begun to kind of chip away even at a quarter of it yet the gameplay is very intuitive and for $15.99 definitely worth that price I would suggest going out and buying it obviously at the moment if you are a PlayStation Plus uh, subscriber it's still free until the beginning of next month so while you can pick this up for free I would very much recommend you do that but if you do miss the window um, $15.99 is not unreasonable at all yes it is a remake but if you're as unfamiliar with the series as I am, it's a lovely entry point, it plays really really nicely because it's all been kind of upgraded and it's kind of nice and fresh and smooth. Obviously there is that sequel that already exists out there so by all means you can kind of really throw yourself into this and then check out the price of the sequel as well. I must say in terms of the free games, certainly for the PlayStation 4 that we've got this month, I think we have been quite spoilt. This and the full clip version of Bulletstorm that we had that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago have been kind of the two best PlayStation 4 games um, that we've had in one month together for a very, very long time. And I look forward to kind of keeping hold of those games and not just immediately deleting them and moving on to next month's. I will be looking forward to engaging with both of them for quite some time to come. So there we go, there were my thoughts on Yakuza Kiwami. Please let me know your thoughts if you've played through this game, and if you have played through the original, how different it is to that. Obviously I can't comment because I haven't played it myself, but if you have, please let me know in the comments below. And next month, obviously, we've got another couple of games um, to review. So until then, I've been that British guy, and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.